It's the Selling for Life podcast. If you're buying, we're selling. Here's, Here's your, your three-headed three monster, monster, Steve, Steve Big, Big Al, Al, and Kevin. And Kevin. All right, welcome to another installment of the Selling for Life podcast. Sponsored by Kind of Good Parts, a world of parts with a personal touch. This podcast is about more than just selling stuff. We think if you stick around, what, Al? Uh, you will get a it. lot out of it. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn something. And if you're buying, Kevin? We're selling. <laughs> We're selling. <laughs> This is episode 61. You're trying to get your catchphrases to click. In. I love them. At least somebody will. I think them. they're good. I think we'll catch on after 50 more episodes. Yeah, let's, let's give it 50. 50 and more? Where it goes from there. Okay. Well, we're at 61. I think that's pretty impressive. Amazing. I'm Steve. I'm joined by sales professional Kevin Zeliox, as you just heard. I like the way I just said your last name. It sounds better than Zeliox. And Conica Boner, Bible Thumper, and former Frank L. Alexander. <laughs> oh, and current uh, Abercrombie and Fitch model, Albert Alexander. Former Frank. You like that, Al? <laughs> <laughs> former Frank. I used to be, yeah, I was born Francis Joseph DeLellis. And you turned into Al somewhere along no the way. Line. Yeah, yeah. I thought when, you were joking. No, when I was four, uh, they changed my name. I, yeah. I kind of like Frank. Yeah, I thought it was Frankie. Can we go back? Can I call you Frank? Dude, you call me Frankie. Dude, I'm going to call you Frankie. You're, you're Frankie from here. I was Frankie from birth, man. <laughs> That's dope. That right? is cool. You know what Frank. time it is, guys? Uh, news headlines. It's time for news headlines. Al, take it away. What do you have? Well, I'm going to do... Well, um, I'm going to do one that I wanted to. Four killed in a knife attack at Paris police headquarters. Man. Uh-oh. Okay, next story. No, let's stick on this one. <laughs> Steve, we I'm can just, build on I'm this one. I'm just kidding because... Of it's got everything in it. It's got uh-huh. murder. It's got intrigue. Suspense. It's got violence and suspense. It's got... It's got yeah, mystery. It's got politics even because po- there's no... Yes, politics, yeah. Gun laws are very strict there. Yes. Right? right they are. And so, how the hell do you kill pil- four people with a knife and a gun? <laughs> and you know what they're going to have to do now. What, uh, oh, what are they going to have to do now? A ban knives. Ban knives. Do it. And but that's like the culinary center of the world. Right. What? Yeah. They can't do knives? What are they gonna do? I don't know. They have to cut their meat with their fists. They'll probably have to get license for knives. They have to tear yes. your feet with permit. Their... Permit. Got a permit. Oh, they gotta get knife. background checks. So the dude was working there, so it's not like a terrorist attack or anything like that. Oh. No, I was a disgruntled employee. He worked mm. there for about sixteen years, it says, and there's no that, motive. How do you get that disgruntled over something you want to kill your employees? I don't know. I just think Kevin. Thank God it wasn't a gun. Right? Have you, Honestly, have you come close here, hey, Kevin? No, no. I, uh, <laughs> I, I like everybody. <laughs> no, I really do. Why are you asking me this right now? No, Dude, uh, he is a mouth breather. He's mouth breathing right now. <laughs> all right, Kevin. If you were gonna though come in all disgruntled, would you knife people to death, or would you just? Nah, no, you know? I don't know. I don't think. I don't think uh, killing someone's really. Um, <laughs> Uh, getting even? Really? I mean, I don't know. No, I don't. I don't see myself ever wanting. I've never wanted to kill somebody ever in my life. You are definitely struggling with that question. And I'm glad. No, if was, you had said, "Well, I'd come in," and I would. No. he was on the fence, though. He was on the fence. He almost. I really wanted to think about it. Like, have I ever wanted to kill someone? It's like no. We wait, live in you, Buffalo. Wait a minute. You Make never... them live here. <laughs> <laughs> you would be saving them from Buffalo. Like, never, I'm not letting yeah. you get out of this. You, <laughs> I you, dislike you. Hey, you've never wanted to kill somebody? Never. I've okay, never wanted nice. to kill anybody. Oh, oh, no, that's nice. How about you, Al? Have you ever wanted to kill somebody? I have. I'm going to be honest. I've yeah? wanted to kill someone. But honestly, I probably would never do it. I mean, think about it. A seasoned British doctor lost his government job. After he refused to call one of his patients, who was transgender, a she. This guy became a woman, and this doctor said, I am not calling you Mrs. or a she, and went before, this is interesting, went before some sort of employment tribunal in England. Apparently, if you have some sort of you know, problem with your employer, you go before this tribunal and they decide whether or not you should be fired, which is really strange. Or maybe it's just for this type of, you know, quote unquote crime. But the judge said that 
this doctor's beliefs, that which were also based on biblical views, was incompatible with human dignity. So, wow. he, so he lost his job. Wow. And it's, a, it's one of the first cases where somebody has suffered a consequence because, com, because of compelled speech in Britain. So they've, got, they've crossed the line. Now they're requiring people to say certain things even, wow. even if they don't believe it. How about that? Hmm. Huh. That's interesting. And then apparently he was so upset over it, he walked into his place of employment and stabbed four people to death. (laughs) (laughs) With a spoon. (laughs) But he used a spoon. A band spoon. Man, is that going to come to America? Can spell Mm. it? Can. can, In the workplace? speech? No, not the the workplace stuff. Or are we already there where we're not allowed to say certain things? We get in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're kind of already there. I think that, I think like we have, um, well, depends on where you work, obviously, right? So, like, I have a, my father in law worked for the state. He had a situation like that where there was somebody who changed their gender while working there. And, you know, New York State had laws and rules of how you had to treat them. Mm-hmm. You know, in a certain way, sure. Expressing them, calling them by the name they want. You know, really, and which I, I, I don't, I, I, don't I don't think you shouldn't. I mean, if somebody sorry. comes in the room, I'm not going to analyze or judge their name, what they are. I wouldn't. You, I mean, if I, if you, if you called me Frankie, mm-hmm. and I'd be like, dude, please, you know, can you stop? I don't think you wouldn't stop, right? You probably would be like, oh, okay. He doesn't like it. Well, well, I don't want to. You know. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. If if okay, you're if let's just say you want to be called Frank, right? Mm-hmm. And some of us here forget that you want to be called Frank. We call you Al. Those people could get in trouble. Oh, well, I think yeah. there's a thin line between doing it on purpose. Right. I have a feeling this guy did it to make a statement. Oh, absolutely. And that's how he lost his job. Absolutely. Yeah. But it could get to a point where they'll single out people maybe just because they don't like their belief system, and use their mistake of using the wrong pronoun. Against them and say, yeah, well, you're fired because we have you on tape calling this guy, you know, a he or this woman a he, whatever. And I guess it can be used in a way in a, in a way that, you know, is is unjust. So the real question is, is this really fighting for the freedom of speech for Christians? Yes, exactly. Right. What do you think? Well, I'm, there are certain groups that will protect their own interests and they will try to you know, rail against the views of others that they don't agree with. I mean, that's just human nature. And eventually you get to that point where it starts to seep into certain policies like this, and then it just takes a life of its own. And then before you know it, you know, people are being rounded up just because people suspect them of believing a certain way. You don't even have to say or do certain things. They'll just say, you know what? You're Jewish. You're going <laughs> You're going on this train to... <laughs> I only have one thing to follow up with this. Okay. Would Jesus show love to that person? Of course he would. There you go. So I would say to that, because I, I don't actually side on the side of going to court over something and being right. all this where I think it's like, dude, you can't judge this person. You probably have things that nobody knows about that are, you know what I mean? Like in God's eyes, all right, but what they if... look at a level of like everything's equal. Mm-hmm. We don't look at that. We look sure. at like, oh, this is worse than that. And that's worse than this. Well, maybe, maybe those people shouldn't impose their belief systems to the point where they're making that person feel uncomfortable calling you by a different name. That's why they shouldn't it go to court goes, over it in goes the first both place. Ways. It goes both ways. And you know the, the lacking thing here is confidence. 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 You have to be confident in your, your beliefs and stand by them no matter what. And that brings us to the topic of the day, Al. How'd you like, do you like the way I did that? I, it was close. You, like, jumped over a puddle. Topic of the day is confidence. There was a ditch you had to jump over to connect those. It took us forever to get to this. <laughs> confidence is what we're talking about today. Confidence, even when we were talking just now, I sensed that Kevin wasn't really confident about whether or not he would walk into an office space and kill people. <laughs> Thank God he was not confident. <laughs> confidence is huge. If you don't have confidence, people pick up on it real quick. They'll... they'll even feel uncomfortable around a person that's not confident. When it comes to sales, if you are on the phone or if you're talking to somebody that doesn't feel confident in their product or what, or what they're selling or service, whatnot, they, they will definitely not probably be willing to continue to work with you. Al, confidence, how, how important is confidence in sales? Well, as a consumer, 
I have a I have a little bit of a story. There's a camping dealership that won't be named. I don't want to I don't want out them at all. But there's a nationwide camping dealership that I bought something from, and I sensed uh, out of the five people I dealt with there, three of them had a lack of confidence, to the point where I had to call one out and ask them like, why? What is going on? They're almost uh, to the sense that you thought like they were hiding something. Mm-hmm. Blatant, yeah. Oh yeah, like you Pretty can't blatant like. You, you can't have that lack of confidence in what you're doing if there's not something behind it. Right. Because I think confidence I'm is worried. built on yeah. built on a foundation of something sure. Mm-hmm. You know, usually confidence comes from, you know, a belief in something sure and something that you're doing right. Or it's hard to have confidence when you're when you think you're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. It'll come through. People just wear their feelings on their sleeve. Or just a, an observant person would tell that there's something weird there. But what if it's what if there's not? What if you're doing something that you feel is wrong but isn't wrong, and it's your perception, and it comes across with a lack of confidence? That's that's mainly what we're dealing with here. Most mm-hmm. of the time in business, someone has a certain perception about something. Steve, you were a salesperson for a while, right? Mm, yes. I would constantly talk to Steve. Uh-oh. Confidence. About con- I would be like, dude, why? What's going? And you would say to me, I think I'm doing something wrong to people. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to. Nah. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't want to show up here tomorrow if I'm doing something wrong. Let's just shut the business down. Mm-hmm. We're doing the right thing. Have confidence in that. Come, let it come across. Everybody struggles with it. I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know, what do you think? Definitely. And you know, I was not confident in my job because, quite honestly. I wasn't sure of what it was I was doing. wasn't really informed enough, I think, at the time because I was still still new in the industry. What I was, what I was selling, or what I was trying to help people with. So a huge part of confidence is being in the know. And if you are not in the know and you have to fake it, well, then your lack of confidence is going to going to shine through. I'm going to take responsibility for that, Steve, because our training sucked five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. The guys that are in training now, they're in training process for about a month, right? Oh, no, seven weeks now. So is it seven weeks now? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A really long time. You got like, what, two days? I got two hours. I think. Two hours of training? <laughs> it took an hour and a half to set up the phone and then about a half an hour of telling me what I was going to do. I think you're a better man for it, though. Mm, I think so. Great man. Kevin, what do you think is a key to having confidence? Mm, understanding of what you're talking about, ultimately. Mm-hmm. If you don't have an understanding about it, you can't possibly be that, that confident about it. Like, I mean, it, it, it goes I, as a consumer, I'm going to bring up a point, too. Like, I'm always the type of guy that goes to like Best Buy first, talk to somebody that's knowledgeable, find out the product I want to buy, and then I go to Walmart to purchase it. Because I know if I'm going to talk to somebody at Walmart, I'm getting nowhere right, with right, information. Right. So I go where the guys are confident, but buy where the price is right. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. That is so funny to do that. Oh, man. I totally I was, would do I that. I totally do that. That's hilarious. Okay, well, thanks for the info. <laughs> You're going to buy that somewhere. Mm. Yes, I am. But thank you. You were very useful. Confidence. Confidence. Yes. Okay, also, someone's lacking confidence. What are some of the things that they should do? Whether it's, you know, when it comes to their profession, professional life or personal life, what are some things that someone can do to improve their confidence? Well, I would have to say it takes practice, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do you practice? I think you no. Um, I think you got to put yourself out there. Okay. Fight, fight your fear. Okay. Well, First off, you got to check yourself against what is right and wrong. Like I said, my example was three out of the five people I dealt with at this camping place didn't have confidence. I found out it was because there were some shady things happening. Okay. <clears throat> that itself, you can't fake it. Or you, nor there's two people that did, but you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You shouldn't fake it. Right. You know, in genuine dealings in business, you got to have a good foundation okay. and just rest on that. Like believe in what you're doing. That's your first step. Your perception's everything. Read up, study. You put the effort in. It's just like if you're going to be practicing for any kind of sport. You put 100 hours of practice in for that first game. It's going to be totally different if you just showed up at the game. Right. Right. So put some effort into it. Train, practice, rehearse. I used to be starting in sales. Put a little when we used to have cassette tapes in the, in the dashboard. I don't know if you've ever seen those. I, I would put the tape in. My four-year-old would be in the back or two-year-old would be in the back, and I would practice with her like little questions and little closes and little things like that, and it was fun. 
But mm-hmm. that's I practiced like right. hundreds of hours because mm-hmm. I just didn't have any confidence in what I was saying. Okay. This topic came up because I was emailing somebody back about a podcast interview that they had to reschedule, and you were coaching me through my email. I realized, you know, one of the one of the most sexy things a woman will tell you that they like about a man is confidence, right? And I can remember being, I can remember being on a date, and this girl got annoyed with me because I kept saying thank you and I'm sorry to the to the wait staff. Oh, you were too <laughs> polite. And she's like, would you just stop and just get to the point and tell them what you need? And I was sending this text message to this person, and you were basically saying, don't say that, say that, do this, do that. Formulating our communication is that a big way of helping? exude confidence yeah i think direct action if you're if you're trying to get a result out of something Mm -hmm. don't beat around the bush Mm -hmm. you know i I just be direct about it and go right to the ask or go to the offer of what the option will be Mm -hmm. you know make it an either or situation what you're describing i was just like hey answer something about their response like oh thank you no problem Mm -hmm. uh we'll set up in the next couple weeks another time we can get together Mm -hmm. i wanted to just be direct in that the communication just told about your next step right? so that when you make that next step, they're not surprised. They're expecting it. It's mm-hmm. like almost leaving the door open you know, okay. or unlocked gotcha. for the next opportunity. All right. Because I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking about results. You know, right. I'm not thinking about whether they like me or not or whether they, mm-hmm. you know, whether they're worried if I was disappointed in them changing plans. No, just, hey, no problem. Let's connect again in the next couple of weeks and uh, I'll send you a schedule. Okay. And that was it. You know, so... I, it looked like when you were writing it out, you were going to be a little bit more wordy, mm-hmm. a little bit more apologetic. Right. And I just didn't think it was needed. Okay. That's all. Yeah. Does Absolutely. that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Get to the bottom line as fast as possible. Bottom line as fast as possible. Don't think. Don't take things personally. I think that's the biggest thing with anybody that lacks confidence is they just take things personally and they let these extraneous things around them that have really been around for their whole lives to to really affect it. I think you got to kind of also work on some of your personal things, too, to help you build confidence. Yeah, I think you're a sum of, like, your baggage you bring with you. Mm-hmm. Right? You're a sum of your childhood. You're a sum of varying degrees of abuse over life yeah. or not. I mean, there's just people bring a lot of stuff with them. Yeah. Um, and it's just the way it is. So I love the way you described it. You know, get to the bottom line. Sometimes you got to shut all that stuff, think of the future. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. <laughs> yeah. That's good good advice. Yeah. That brings us to our next segment, and that is... An inspirational message. Oh, it's my turn? Yeah. All right. You ready to be inspired? Yeah. Okay. Come on now. Um, um, Come on, preach uh, it. I don't know what to say. I'm not really confident about it. <laughs> Very good. What if I say the wrong Get thing? Get to the point, Al. I Quick. Don't know. You got five seconds. All right. So if you need something, tell people. If you want something, tell people. If you can do something for someone else, do it. Don't wait. Don't let it hesitate. Just go for it. Because you know what? It's better than doing nothing. I like that. Very good. Al, thanks so much. Kevin, thank you so much. All right, well, that brings us to the end of our 61st Selling for Life podcast. Remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also check out our website at sellingforlife.com. So remember, whether you're selling Ginsu knives or you are trying to convince somebody, you really are a woman. So call me she and Mrs. One thing's for sure, you are always selling for life. 